Hello! Silver Grayscale here, getting back to Doom 2016. And... Yeah, we're just gonna... Where are you? There you are. Yeah, we're just gonna introduce... That guy too. Gauss Cannon. <laughs> and uh, it just occurred to me that we failed to look into two things. First of all, the Gauss Cannon. The Gauss Accelerator design has been used by the UAC as the basis for numer uh, numerous industrial projects over the years, such as the Argent Tower itself and the ore diggers found on Deimos and Phobos. Deimos and Phobos was the two moons of Mars uh, from the original Doom. I don't think they've actually used the moons in this game actually, so... Uh, with very sm few moving parts, the Gauss Cannon makes a reliable, powerful weapon. By accelerating steel fleshets through a magnetized chamber, extremely high velocities can be achieved. The weapon has nearly perfect accuracy, thanks to the aerodynamic design of the projectiles. Ammunition is cheap and readily available, and is designed to maintain its composition when passing through organic material. The Gauss Cannon has a noticeable kick that must be compensated by, uh, for by the operator. As for the monsters, we have the Cacodemon. Cacodemons are monstrous fishonic demons driven by the desire to feed. They display limited intelligence and are often sent into the fray as their neutral size and ability make them an intimidating weapon for, de for the demon horde. And La Sol. These demons are found wandering aimlessly within the temples of hell as they search for a host to inhabit. When a powerful victim, or when a potential victim is found, they will converge on the target and explode with a blast of hell energy. Lesser willed beings weakened by the explosion, and uh, weakened by the explosion, will then be possessed by the demon, and the host's soul becomes lost in return. Tablets received, uh, retrieved from the uh, Korax suggest that the lost souls are considered the lowest of the demons. Even lower than the imp. Since the wandering nomads, doomed forever to roam the halls of hell, thrive on the weakest entities, lost souls are despised by the other demons. Despite, uh, despite their lowly stature, they should not be underestimated. Speaking of the lost souls. <laughs> Uh, I swear, it's like you mentioned them once and they won't stop coming. That's probably the coolest um, glory kill right there on the Revenant, hitting them in the back there. Alright, Mancubus has been dealt with. Oh, this will be fun. Small platform against literally kamikaze pilots. This is... Surely is the most fun you can ever have in hell. Ah, look at that, it's the meatball of doom. And now we're the meatballs of doom. Technically this should... Okay. I was about to say, technically that should count as a headshot, because they're only a head. Well, did I know you were here. Ow. 
Do you mind? Bad Kako Demon. There we have the front glory kill of the Kako Demon. It's pretty much the same all around. You just punch him in the big glowy eye. I prefer just shooting them apart, to be honest. Sure, it's not as badass, but, um... I mean, it's kind of bad when they basically have the same glory kill from every direction. Pardon me one moment. Okay, we're back. That was my phone, and I thought for a moment that... It was a message that I was waiting for, but turns out it was Facebook. Uh... Okay, um, I'm gonna need this. Well, at least that put me on to full health and got rid of some neat armor and got rid of the more annoying pests. But honestly, I should have saved that because knowing me playing a game like this um, when my brain is half asleep due to allergies. Um, like my energy reserves are being constantly drained. Um, yeah, I probably should have saved that. Uh... Oh, thank God, thank God, thank God. There we go. Now we're just going to deal with the revenant. There we go. All right. That was the auto map for hell. Okay, we have the portal there. The Blood Keep, also referred to as the Kattinger Sanctum, is a sprawling network of tongues, catacombs, and temples that connect uh, that connect the wasteland uh, umbral plains to the Great Steppe. It's believed that this area serves as a place of worship and vilification of both hero and enemy uh, as both hero and enemy can be found buried in tombs throughout the region. The area is inhabited by all manner of demons including the possessed, the unwilling, lost souls, hell knights and other non-classified creatures. The Project Lazarus Manned Expedition, MTC uh, 2145-128, uh, uncovered one tomb of particular interest. The temple was adorned by pow uh, powerful holding runes and unique relics. Despite the complete loss of human life to the exp uh, on the expedition, the relics were successfully returned by the scout bots to the Lazarus Labs for processing and study. Unfortunately, records disappeared after the relics were sent to the Lazarus Labs and are now presumed lost. Well, I don't think there's anything else for us to nab right here, so... I'm just gonna head over this way. No, we're not. I have no sense of direction. Hooray!
All right. <clears throat> another <clears throat> entry here, the expedition. As a tier 2 advocate, you have access to privileged information that will help you understand the UAC's mission and purpose, and how you fit in the good future, in the new future. You'll be privy to a deeper understand, uh, to a deeper understand of our symbiotic connection with Argent Plasma, and how, and to how harnessing and using, uh, using it is more than just good for, good Fortune, it's good sense. You will also no doubt start discussing some of the more sensitive subject matters that we tier 2 advocates mull over. One conversation that is often heard around the Arden Tower is, what happened to Samuel Hayden? As you know, our venerable leader designed the original Arden Tower and currently its construction uh, his mortal body was consumed by a devastating cancer. Despite this, Samuel did not give up and used the power of the Argent energy to create a new, more powerful body for himself. Samuel was still Samuel, but he became so much more. While it can be disconcerting to see Samuel now, remember that Samuel never gets sick, never tires, and is never afraid. What do we have to think for that? Argent energy, of course. Do you want to be like Samuel? Set your sights on becoming a tier 3 advocate. Tier 3 is where the secret power within you is revealed. Well, I thought they would actually go more into detail with this place, but no, apparently not. And there you have those two testaments if you want to read them yourself. They can be found in the archives like everything else. Praetor token with three of them. Alright, let's get uh, faster weapon switching. And we could get something new here. Uh, do, 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 do. Big shock. Quick load. Yeah, let's go for the quick load. Yeah, this is so much easier. Can use this grab lift. So yeah, we have the precision bolt. Use the weapon mob button to zoom in and charge a high damage shot. And we have the siege mode. Uh, use the weapon mod button to charge up a powerful beam that penetrates targets. Movement is disabled while using siege mode. I think we're gonna siege mode it first. So, yeah, as you can see, we can't move. But this lets us basically just deal a lot of damage fast uh, without uh, without doubt the UEC's most remarkable recent discovery was the undis uh, was uh, was uncovered in the uh, in the <laughs> in its expedition to Hell's Cadner sanctum after several kilometers through nearby impassable terrain, the team discovered a sealed tomb, its entrance and wall covered by protective runes and imp uh, imprisonment incantations. 
was opened, and the tomb revealed many artifacts, including the Praetor suit. Most notably, however, was the enormous sarco uh, sarcophagus bound to the center, uh, center bedrock of the tomb with thick iron bands, seemingly anchored to prevent anything from getting in or out. It was initially believed that this sarcophagus must hold a rare or powerful demon, but when it later opened, it revealed to be the body of a man. The body was not petrified or decomposed. In fact, he appeared to be only sleeping, despite the fact that the bed he lay, uh, he lay in seemed millennia old. Attempts to wake the man bear, uh, were fruitless, and to harm him even more so, as the protective ardent barrier around the body kept him safe from harm in permanent st uh, stasis. UFC uh, archivists catalogued the discovery DM1-5, but project personnel has soon dubbed him the Doom Marine. While history of this man remains conjecture, the helix stone, as well as other artifacts found on the Argent, uh, Argent Fracture and during the Hell Expedition of ECM-13, have shed some lights on his identity. An etching uh, in the book of Deva, another discovery of the Cardigan uh, expedition, depicts a doom marine wielding the Praetor suit, engaging demons in battle as a hooded figure looks on. This image has been previously observed numerous times in other artifacts, but only with the Actual discovery of the Doom Marine and the Praetor suit that is sealed uh, in the sealed Kanegar tomb have researchers begun to put other pieces together. It's now believed that the Doom Marine might have been a part of an ancient group or tribe, maybe even their leader. Whether he is god, demon, or human will remain undetermined until the ardent barrier protecting his body can be deactivated. Further deepening uh, the mystery of his origin. UAC remote monitoring drones in service during the Kanagar expedition recorded a protracted and deadly battle during the sarcophagus extraction. The demons attempting to defend a tomb with an instinctual ferocity previously unobserved. Once tattered and returned to the UAC, the sarcophagus was studied and first opened at the Lazarus Labs but went missing a few weeks later. It, uh, it was believed that Samuel Hayden had the body and the Praetor suit moved and hidden to keep it secure. Although why he considered it to be under threat is not known. A final note to date, the Doom Marine and Samuel Hayden are the only known non-demon entities to successfully cross over to the Hell Dimension to our own. Despite several attempts by other UAC human personnel to do the same. Alright, who is our first guest to try out the siege mode? So yeah, this big dude is just tearing through demons. My friends, it's the Baron of Hell. Alright. You're really starting to tick me off here, buddy. I need a lot more distance if I'm gonna siege mode this guy. Ow. There we go. Yeah, siege mode is extremely powerful. 
but you know it leaves you vulnerable by just merely existing all right quad damage And uh, the Baron. And down he goes. <laughs> I did say when we got the super shotgun that it would be powerful, but... Um... This powerful? And uh, the Baron. Meet Chainsaw. Jesus Christ. There's a lot of barons of hell here. And he is just pumping us. Alright. Let's, uh... Before we go, let's, uh... Read the entry for the Baron of Hell. The Baron of Hell is the highest demon among the Order of the Hell Knights. They rarely leave hell, and no Baron of Hell has yet been captured by any of the tethering operations. Details regarding their behavior and physiology is therefore limited. So... Yeah, we have... Uh, met the Baron of Hell, many of them, and... An ominous cave into this ominous monument. Fun times ahead. See you guys next time.